Hello guys, so today what I have for you is I have something slightly different. Um, I've wanted to do a video like this for ages. Um, I've never really got round to it. I've either bait, well, I basically have had like circumstances that have meant that I can't do it, um, or I've just been lazy. Um, but I finally got around to doing it, and it's basically top 10 Camels tanks. It's kind of like the ideal time to do it, I guess, because the campaign's on at the moment. Uh, the whole campaign's to attend. Stage 2 has just ended, but the big stage, stage 3, is probably going to start by the time you see this tomorrow, I think. Maybe the day after, I'm not sure. Um, so, I, th I think it's probably an okay time to do a Clan Wars Tanks video. So, all it is top 10 Clan Wars Tanks. Um, of course, this is just my opinion. Um, some of them, I've like... I've put, so some of them are like so close in terms of how, they're used for completely different things, but it's hard to order them, um, which which position to put them in, but some of them are quite close, and of course, you know, like, not everyone's going to agree with this, however, I will make sure that I at least explain my reasoning why I think it's there, and also basically why it's a good tank. So, let's go on with it. So at number 10 on my list, I have the T1023. Now the T1023 is one of those tanks that in the right position can be ridiculously strong. Um, the reason why it's so strong is because its frontal armor is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, pretty much the only places you can pen the front is on the edge of the lower plate around here. And maybe if you get a bit lucky with really high heat pen, you can pen the bit top here. Basically its frontal armor is really, really difficult to pen. I mean, you can also pen this viewport. But basically, it's really difficult to pen, and when you're using it on maps like Lakeville and you have it this far away from the enemy team, um, then it can be even stronger because you can't aim for these weak spots. Furthermore, um, it has 375mm of APCR pen, which pretty much means just load the APCR and you can go straight through um, the front of most tanks. Uh, and with 750 alpha, it can just do so much damage before it's taken out. It can lock down a flank and stop the push from happening really, really easy just because of its armor and its alpha. Also, it does have 8 degrees of gun depression, which is quite a helpful feature. It means that it can use like little sort of, I don't know, mounds like this to be able to hide its lower plate and also make this slightly less, less sort of obvious. Um, it's not as weak as the E4s, which basically means that it's really, really strong. The only real problems with this tank is, of course, it doesn't have a turret, and also that it's quite slow, so you can't really relocate it that much. So you kind of need to commit it to a flank, and then you can't move it out. So at number nine on my list, I have the Mouse. Um, the Mouse is a really, really strong tank. Although it did have a bit of a nerf, um, it was a nerf from its kind of buff state, um, a nerf that it sort of needed. Um, but it is still a really, really good tank for Clan Wars. Um, now why is the mouse a good tank for clan wars? Well the mouse is a great tank for clan wars purely because it's armour. Um, it's armour is, if you can angle it properly, is really really effective. Um, it can be used sort of close to block off areas um, and hold enemies just because its hit point in its armour means that it can just take shots and hold for a long time. Also it's 390 alpha with that sort of good APCR pen means that it's pretty consistent at being able to put shots in. Um, it can do a fair amount of damage, and especially against tanks like Type 5s, where they can put in one shot, do about five, 600 damage to it, but the mouse can put in two shots in return. It still makes it a fairly decent tank. As I said, that sort of 3k hit points really does mean that it can play and defend well. Um, it can definitely take the shots, and that is why it's such a strong tank. Um, of course, before the buff, um, no, before the nerf, sorry, um, when it had a lot more DPM, of course it probably would have been higher up the list, but I think that it still is definitely a viable Clamor's tank, especially if you don't have tanks like Type 5s, and then definitely use the mouse. The only problem with the mouse um, really is the mobility. Um, it's hard to get around the map, of course, its lack of DPM um, is also a problem. Uh, especially if you're getting in like fights with lots of sort of WZ or 5As, uh, that's when it is sort of a bit of a problem. Um, and especially if mediums get around the side of you, uh, they can 
tear mouses apart really quickly. But overall, it definitely is a solid Clan Wars tank. Next up on my list at number 8 is the AMX 50B. The AMX 50B is a really, really strong tank, however, it can only really be used on certain maps. The 50B has 1600 clip potential, it has 4 shells that do 400 um, average damage each, and basically, it has um, a 65 km hour top speed limit, which means that it can really, really quickly relocate around the map and get away after it's used its clip. This means that it can be extremely useful on maps like Himmelsdorf, where you just want to get a tank up to the hill quickly, put a clip into anything crossing, um, and pretty much be able to get a jump on your opponent really, really early on by getting some easy damage. It's also, it being fast means it can run away um, very quickly as well, so that it can put in one clip, get away, and then put in another clip later on. This means that you can get like a really, really effective use out of it, um, it can get two clips in, which is definitely worth the hit points of it. And it's just a really, really nice tank. Um, now, it's very similar to the T57 Heavy in terms of uh, its clip. It doesn't clip as fast as the T57 Heavy. However, um, what it does do is um, it's definitely a little bit more accurate, especially over longer range than the T57. And that's probably the reason why the 50B isn't it isn't always used on maps like Himmelsdorf if you don't need to get it into position quickly. Now I'm not going to put T57 separately on this list just because they're basically two really similar tanks that are just used in different situations. Um, T57 more for closer range, 50B for longer range and more relocational. Relocational? Is that even a word? Um, so I've kind of put them both at number 8. Uh, they're both very, very good tanks. Clan Wars. And the, the only problem is with them is literally that you can't use them on that many maps just because it's not really always useful to have tanks in those sort of positions all the time. So at number 7 on my list I of course have the STRV 103B. The STRV is an absolute monster in Clan Wars because you can pick this tank and you can set it up for the map. Often you'll see the STRV at the back. Um, sniping, because sniping is what the STRV does. Um, the siege mode means that it can't really sort of brawl with anything, and it kind of has to sit back. Now, it can sit back because its accuracy is like below 0.3. Basically, it's ridiculously accurate. It's like a laser when you're when you're using this tank. Also, it has insane DPM because of its siege mode. Because you give up the mobility while in siege mode, it just makes it so so good at putting in damage constantly. Now. Also, what the STRV has going for it is it's also got 50 km hour speed limit um, when not in siege mode, which means that you can relocate it around the map pretty quickly. Um, and also, its camera rating is super high, which means often it doesn't get spotted when it is sitting on the back of the map. You can see in siege mode that this tank actually turns pretty quickly as well. Um, it's not that immobile in siege mode, it just can't move very fast. Um, and it basically means that it is a really, really nice tank to have at the back. Um, it can practically make a push not worth it for the enemy team because it can just sit there and pump in so much damage before the enemy team even get to them, um, you know, before they even spot the STRV just because the camera rating is so high. Um, the 50 km hour speed limit, I'm not sure if it, I've even already mentioned this, basically it can relocate really, really easily around the map. I, I have already mentioned it, but I've mentioned it again because it is pretty, pretty mad. Also, with um, the way its hydraulics work, 11 degrees of gun depression, Really good for ridges, and just overall, it is it is a really really nice tag. The only problems with, are with it is, of course, each mode means that it can't really shoot on the move, um, and it just it just doesn't suit all, every single map. Um, it suits it a lot like a lot more maps than the E3 does. However, of course, you can't use it on every single map, and that's probably why it's down at number seven. If it was like just pro craft cross it would probably be like number two or something, because it just is so strong on maps like Prokhorovka. At number six on my list, I have the Super Conqueror. Um, the Super Conqueror is probably the newest tank um, that can be used in Clan Wars at the moment. Um, it is really, really strong for Clan Wars. It has 10 degrees gun depression, which makes it an absolute ridge line warrior. Um, it has really really strong frontal armour. Um, when using its gun depression it's kind of got to be hold down, um, got to be hiding its lower plate 
but when it can do that, it is really, really strong on bridge lines. As long as you keep your, your turret face towards the enemy team. Um, also, it has like 1.8 second, 1 second aim time, really, really high DPM, the same as the FE215B, which had the same DPM, but that's kind of all the tank had. But now it's kind of got armor, got gun depression. This tank is now extremely strong. Yeah, 279 frontal turret armor, as I said with the, with the armor at the front, it's just it's just really nice for sitting on red lines and just farming to be honest. Um, of course the tank has problems, it's a bit slow. Um, if they get your side, you know, um, it's really easy to pen. I can kind of be looking at this direction towards that guy there, but I'm open to this side and it's really really easy to pen the side of the turret. It, it does have problems, um, you can't use too many of them because yeah, you can only use them in certain positions like the ridge lines on Miravanka, um, also like Fisherman's Bay in the middle, um, Prokhorovka in the middle, but you've got you've got to use it in positions that you can really really use the gun depression. If it doesn't use its gun depression, it's a bit useless to be honest. Although it has got its DPM I suppose, but you just can't, the, the, just the WZ is a bit of a better tank for brawling. So yeah, and number seven, um, no not number seven, number six, um, it's the Super Conqueror. So at number 5 on this list I have the IS-7. Now I was torn between whether I put the IS-7 in 5th or 6th in front of the Super Conqueror um, or behind it and I decided to put it in 5th. Now the reason why I put it in 5th is because I just feel that it can be used on a few more maps. Um, it can also, I feel as if you can take more of them than you can um, than the Super Conqueror just because it can be used in a few more situations. However, they're pretty much 50-50 in terms of like, that you could kind of put them as joint fifth. Now, why is the I-7 a good tank? Well, the I-7 is a good tank pretty much purely because of its turret armor. You, you pick this tank because of its turret armor. Um, it's practically impenetrable from the front unless uh, a Jagdpanzer is firing heat, it like hits a flat spot or something, but um, pen in front of this turret is just something that doesn't really happen. Also, it has 490 alpha, um, which means that it can trade really nicely. Uh, it has 2,400 hit points, which it got well buffed up from 2,150. That's why it's used a lot more. That's why this probably wouldn't have been on my list before the. But it, it may have been on the list, but it may, it may have been like number 10 or something, just for those couple of hold down positions. But also with its extra bit of like dispersion buffs and stuff, it pretty much means that it can just be used in a lot more situations. It's not so much of. Um, like you used to take it, it would sit in that one position and it was absolutely useless at anything else on that map. Um, so if you lost, like, if the enemies didn't push that side, then a tank, oh you've got to use the IS-7. But now it's actually an okay tank, you can use it on maps like Prokhorovka in the middle, you can use it of course on uh, Redshire. Uh, I think that it is really, really competitive now. And just the speed limit's really okay, the alpha, the hit points, and of course the turret just make it overall a pretty good tank. And number four on my list, I have the Type 5 Heavy. The Type 5 Heavy is a tank in Clan Wars that is extremely strong. Um, it's a tank that basically it's, it's made so good by its 2.9k hit points um, and pretty much its big high, uh, high explosive gun. The gun does uh, has an alpha of 1,400 when you use the premium rounds. Uh, got a lot of controversy because its premium rounds does more damage than its normal rounds. Um, however, realistically, it does about 500 to 700 damage on sort of a reasonably armored opponent. Um, and basically, what this means is that it can constantly be putting in damage. It doesn't really have to hit a certain part. It does damage every shot. It doesn't have to worry about penetrating. It's just constantly doing damage, and that's the reason why the Type 5 is so useful. It can peek on corners, you have a lot of Type 5s peeking, they'll put in a shot, it can usually do more alpha than, than what's hitting it, but the enemy team often can't come back around the corner and put a shot in return, because there's more Type 5s there, and therefore, you know, it's it's not really a good trade, um, and that's why it's very, very difficult to trade against Type 5 Heavy, um, unless you sort of push aggressively against them, and take the shots with like one tank and then they have a long reload but overall it's really really difficult to deal with also it has a few perks like 
10 degrees of gun depression. Um, it does have a lot of armor. Unfortunately, the armor is quite flat, which basically means that in Clan Wars, when everyone's firing APCR and P, um, it is quite easy to pen, especially if you shoot sort of these bits, these bits, and these bits. Um, through the front of the turret, not hitting the bandit is really, really easy as well. Um, so the armor doesn't count for that much during Clan Wars, but it's definitely this high alpha gun. Um, well, just constant damage coming out of it is what makes it really, really hard to face. And number three on the list, I have the Badger 25T. Badger 25T is a tank that is really, really strong to have in a uh, in, in Clan Wars. Now, the reason for it being so strong is to do with its speed, its camo, um, its view range, its click potential. Basically, all of these factors is what makes it so good. Now. 65 an hour, uh, km an hour top speed limit means that it can get into position really quickly and easily be able to get out of position if it needs to. Now, combined with the good camera rating, often it means getting in the position it won't get spotted um, and it can outspot pretty much anything. So, if at least if you spot, like you will definitely spot them if they spot you. Um, another advantage of the tank is, of course, its clip. It has 390 alpha and it has 5 shots. This, what this means is that 1950 clip potential it means that if anyone basically pushes on you you can't you can't sort of YOLO a bat chat um, and just kill it because the bat chat well unless you're sending a couple of tanks because the bat chat will usually be able to defend itself at least to some extent uh, and that's just what makes it a bit different from something like a T100 light tank um, of course it doesn't retain its camera rating on the move but often it's fine for the bat chat to get spotted because as long as you're spotting then your team will be able to back you up in clan wars um, like it doesn't really matter if the bat chat does get spotted um, unlike in randoms where your team probably won't back you up that much in clan wars you're literally setting the tactic sometimes around the bat chat um, what the bat chat spots and you can protect the bat chat a lot better um, put it, by putting the bat chat in a position that if the bat chat does get pushed the enemy team lose out a lot for it. And that's why just the Batchat is just so effective in Clan Wars, um, and why it's used a lot more than light tanks. Pretty much just because it can defend itself a bit more, I'd say that's the main reason. Um, but it just overall is a really nice tank, both in randoms and Clan Wars, really. The only problems with it is probably its gun's a bit inaccurate, it's got a really long reload, but, you know, Hopefully, hopefully you've defended yourself with your almost 2k clip potential. So, deciding whether this tank was going to be in first or second was really, really difficult for me. Um, it has ended up in second, however, I'd say it's more like a joint first here. Um, I'm, I might literally say that it's a joint first in terms of that's where I put it, because yeah, it's a really hard decision between this and the tank that I have put in first. Um, however, it is the, of course, the WZ111 5A. So this tank is basically like a 113, except made better. Um, it has more alpha damage than the 113, that's 490 rather than 440. It has 7 degrees of gun depression over pretty much all of it, um, like over the front and stuff, which the 113 only has the 7 degrees over the side, so that's a bit of an advantage over that. Um, and what makes it really, really good is that it goes at 50 kilometers an hour, which means that it can rotate around the map really fast. And the thing is, it, unlike the IS-7, it actually gets to that speed limit fairly quickly um, and can keep it constantly. Whether it, like it's not only the IS-7 where you go up a tiny hill and you've lost all your speed, um, it definitely does hold that speed. Um, it has a really strong turret. Unfortunately, the cupolas are quite easy to pen. Um, the Capolas aren't as good as the 113s, however, overall the turret armor is a bit better. Its lower plate isn't as weak as the 113s, um, and I'd say that the armor model compared to the 113 is probably a little bit better on the 5A, except for those Capolas. Um, just its overall, it's just its 490 alpha, its 50 km hour speed limit, just its quick rotations, it just makes it a really, really good kind of assault heavy, I suppose you could call it. Um, a fast heavy to push in quickly, yet not quite a medium because if it was a medium then often like the medium doesn't have the armor, doesn't have the hit points. Of course this has a couple of hundred more hit points than than a um a, like you know a, a Russian medium. And that's just what makes it a really really good 
aggressive tank to play with. Um, I would highly recommend using these. Uh, they have really nice DPM and overall. I'm going to say that the 130, like, if you say your clan doesn't have WZ5As, a 113 is fine. Um, the 113 is basically a slightly less good version of this, um, but it still is the same style of tank, same sort of speed, um, just high DPM. It doesn't have as much alpha, doesn't really have the hull armor. Like, well, it, it, the 113 seems easier to pen, to be honest, uh, going over into firing gold. But the 113 is is definitely uh, an alternative option. So at number one on my list, although realistically joint number one, the WZ um, is the Object 907, of course. Um, the Object 907 is an absolute monster. It has super high DPM. It has better sort of hull armor than lots of the other Russian mediums. Well, pretty much all the other mediums. Um, that hull armor, like the shape of it, with kind of has it's a little bit of a Toblerone below it or something, like an upside down Toblerone, which means that it can kind of bounce shells really, really easily off the sides. Also, the front, the sudden angles in it make it that some um, shells just bounce off it, and it can be really frustrating to try and pen. Also, has a super strong turret. Um, of course, the cupolas are a problem. But the turret is really, really strong. Um, 55 km speed limit to really get around the map fast. It's pretty much a tank for everything. Um, it is just the tank. It is just a tank that you really, really want to have. Um, and of course, it's really ironic because this tank is so good um, for clan wars. But to get it, you need to play clan wars. So the 140 is. Um, is a really fine alternative. The 140 isn't really that much worse. Um, it would still be second on my list, as in it would definitely be behind the 5A, but it would still be up there. Definitely wouldn't be a tank that I could remove completely. Um, it's still a really strong tank. It, had a, it has an extra degree of gun depression over the 907. Also, it has um, it got it, the top of its turret buffed, I think, so that it's harder to overmatch. Um, but it is just a really, really nice tank. Um, so, yeah. I'd say um, for Clam Wars, the three tanks that you want, um, so say you're starting out with Clam Wars and you want to tell your clan to get three tanks, get people to get 140s, uh, WZ5As, or 113s, um, and you need a few bat chats, and you can pretty much do most maps just with those tanks. Um, of course, for Clan Wars, you get the option of knowing the map before, but well, not the option, as in you do know the map before, which basically means that you can get certain tanks for it, that's why Super Conquerors can be important, IS-7s can be important, because they can be used in those positions that you want to use them, um, and where well, they can work a lot better than lots of the other tanks, which means that you can, like, you know, benefit from having those tanks over other tanks. And that's pretty much the reason why um, the top three tanks on this list are just the three most used tanks. And there's a good reason why they're the most used tanks. They're the most versatile tanks. 5As, 907s and bat chats can be used on every single map um, effectively. And that's just the reason why they're the top three. Uh, I was going to do like a little honourable mention thing. Um, I didn't just because otherwise this video would be way too long. Um, I'd be surprised if people are still watching. If you are, thank you very much. If you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe. Uh, throw that in. Um, but I will just, I, I, yeah, I can't make it too long. So I'll just put a little, a little page with a few tanks that I didn't mention, but definitely think are worth a mention um, and can be used in really good situ like situations on certain maps. So thank you for watching. This video did take me quite a long time to record. Um, took me like an hour and a half, but hopefully it's worth it because I feel as if it's a video I really wanted to make um, and to find all the replays for this to get all the different tanks also took a while um, So I really appreciate it if you did watch it. Thank you. Goodbye